in this exercise, exercise 1b, we will get acquainted with what is called the normal equation. Now let us first uh, take a look at the setup of the entire thing uh, and also the notations of the normal equations in this video. We want to find the best estimator uh, or, or the best linear uh, estimator uh, theta tilde LB of theta with respect to this risk. Uh, this quadratic risk here, in the class of linear functions of x and x minus 1 now. So we've moved away from the setup in 1a because what we're doing now is we're going to try and estimate theta using the estimator theta tilde, which is built upon a data vector of two data points, not just x, but x and x multiplied by x minus 1. Now, this is kind of a weird construction because you might be like, so if this is Johnny's policy, does that mean his claim number in the first year is X and his claim number in the second year is the claim number of the first year multiplied by that minus one? Why do we even want to look at it? And so on and so on. So, so, so first of all, let us just note that this means... Um, this means that our theta tilde uh, will be written as a0 plus a1x plus a2 multiplied by x multiplied by x minus 1, right? Because we want to find the three coefficients that... Um, that 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 give us theta tilde that minimize this quadratic risk. Uh, another thing that we should probably notice as well is the reason why we're looking at these a coefficients directly now is because we can no longer use the Buhlmann model setup to use the one minus w and the w formula because we can in no way guarantee that the x data point and the x multiplied by x minus 1 data point have some kind of independence structure given theta. So we cannot use any of the formulas uh, used for the Buhlmann model. We will have to go back to the general case of minimizing the quadratic risk from chapter 6, 1. Now, we want to minimize this thing, this thing here uh, by finding the right a0, a1, and a2 to build theta tilde in order to get as close to theta as possible. Where theta, we recall, is, well, theta is the mean of x given theta, right? So, so we're still estimating the yearly uh, the, 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 the expected claim size given theta, we're just estimating it using two data points, and the second data point seems kind of weird. Well, actually, if we really think about it, it's not that weird. We can try and rewrite this, and then we actually get a0 plus a1 minus a2 multiplied by x plus a2 multiplied by x squared. I just took this minus 1x term and I moved it over here. So essentially what we're doing in exercise B is saying instead of finding a linear estimator uh, of theta, actually we shouldn't call it linear at all. We should call it a polynomial estimator. In some sense, now we are expanding the set of functions that we can use to construct our Bayes estimator. We're not just looking at linear functions of x, we're actually looking at functions of x and x squared. So that is actually what we're doing in exercise 1b. We're trying to construct uh, polynomial Bayes estimators. That's a kind of cool name. So it's we can call it a second order polynomial Bayes estimator or something like that. Um, then, then some of you might ask, well, 
okay, I kind of get the idea. Why on earth didn't we just say now we will estimate, uh, we will make an estimate theta prime based on a zero prime plus a one prime x plus a two prime x squared, right? I mean, why do we have to do this weird x multiplied by x minus one construction? What's what's the point of that? And uh, to that, I have to say, uh, it's a question of a calculational, uh, what do you call it, necessity, uh, or, 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 or something that makes our calculations easier, in the sense that uh, the, the x given theta are Poisson distributed, uh, and thus the mean of x given theta is the mean of theta, but because uh, is is theta, sorry, the mean of x given theta is is I, I don't know how I, I wrote this is 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 theta, but but also because of the Poisson distribution assumption, the falling factorials um, can actually be written as theta squared, theta to the third, and so on and so on. So the mean of x multiplied by x minus 1 multiplied by x minus 2 given theta is then equal to theta to the third, and so on. So, so because we have this Poisson distribution assumption, it is easier to work with theta in this way than it is to work with theta in this way. Oh, so that is yet again one of the beautiful subtleties of the exercises in this book that you only really understand if you spend some time asking yourself, why is the exercise done this way? Why is it made this way? And what, what can I learn from this exercise? So this is pretty beautiful. Uh, let's get on to what, what they're asking uh, uh, of us in this exercise. Uh, they, they, they tell us, well, well, you want to find the theta tilde that minimizes this quadratic risk. Uh, write up the normal equations that uh, help us find a0, a1, and a2. So what we'll do now is just walk through the notation of the normal equations. Let's see if I can get this layer here. Okay, so the normal equations that we use in the case where we have uh, an m-dimensional data vector and we want to find the y hat that minimizes this expression here with respect to the y. Well, the normal equations we use then, they are written as this system here. And I think we use formula 615 in the book for this. And essentially what you do is you take the thing that you want to find the estimate for, which is x, and you write its covariances with each of the yi, each of the data points, on one hand, and then on the other hand, you write the covariances of the approximation y hat with the data points, and you want to get them to be as equal to each other as possible, and you find the a's that do that. So, 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 so the the thing here is just the the normal equations are actually what is written up here. However, it is kind of hard for us to understand what on earth uh, is this exactly? Like, what does this actually mean? I am confused. So let us just try to write it up a bit more nicely. Um, so I'm going to make a box here. And it's not a beautiful box, but, but, but inside this box, I will write the normal equations. And the first thing that we have to notice is if you have m data points, then that implies that you will have to write up m plus 1 equations because there is one a belonging to each data point, a1 up to a m, and then you have the a0 intercept that has nothing to do with any of the data points. So the first equation is the mean of x is equal to the mean of y hat. and it's probably easier for us to figure out what this means if 
I just write out the mean of y hat. So that is the mean of this entire expression. So it is a0 plus a1 multiplied by the mean of y1 plus a2 multiplied by the mean of y2 and so on and so on until a m multiplied by the mean of y m. That was the first equation. The second equation goes on the covariance of x and y1 should be equal to the covariance of y hat and y1. So if I just plug in the values of y hat, then what I have is a0 plus a transposed multiplied by the data vector. So that is the inner product of two vectors, which quite simply is a k multiplied by y k summed for all the k's up to m have this covariance with y1. Now the the covariance is bilinear in the sense that uh, if I have a sum of terms in the first argument, then I can split the covariance up into the covariance, into the sum of covariances. So the first term in that sum would be the covariance of a0 on y1. The covariance of a constant with anything is always zero. The deterministic constant is independent from everything else always. So the first term is just zero. So what I have left is just the sum of each of these covariances with y1, and I can take the constant outside. So I have the sum of ak multiplied by the covariance of yk and y1. Similarly, I can write up the next normal equation, which is the covariance of x and y2, must be equal to the sum from 1 to m of ak multiplied by the covariance of yk and y2. Now notice that when I take the covariance of something, then covariance of x and y is always equal to the covariance of y and x. So when I calculate the covariance expressions here. Essentially, I don't need to calculate all of them because I already have the covariance of y2 and y1 from here. So over here, I only have to calculate m minus 1 covariances. And then we go on and on and on until equation m plus 1, where I look at the covariance between x and y m and set that equal to the sum of covariances between yk and ym uh, scaled with a1, a2, and so on up until m. So let us just count for fun the number of expressions of x and y's and so on that we need to calculate just in order to just write up the normal equations. In, this, in the case where we have m data points, what we have to do is to calculate, well, mean of x, then we have the mean of y1, y2, and so on up until ym. Already there, I have m terms plus 1. And also, I need to calculate each of these covariances with x, so there are m of those. And then, in the first line, I need to calculate these m covariances. In the second, I need to calculate m minus 1, and so on and so on, until the last one where I need to calculate 1, right? So uh, the number of, uh, of, of different covariance and mean value expressions that we need to calculate just in order to write up the normal equations is 2m plus 1 plus... Uh, m squared multiplied uh, m squared minus m divided by two plus m, and that m goes here. So it's actually three m plus one plus m squared minus m divided by two. Uh, if you don't believe me, you can try to do that calculation. <laughs> so 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 in order to write up the normal equations, we actually have to calculate a bunch of stuff as well. And 
uh, I mean, that isn't too bad, but now you are warned. Uh, that is what we will do in the next part where we write up the normal equations, not for the general stuff, but for our concrete case and where we calculate all these different covariances.